A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Wasiki. We're going to speak about way forward regarding Kenyan football. And of course, joining me are two gentlemen who form an integral part as far as Kenyan football is concerned. One of them, Simon Sepe Mulama, former Kenyan international, and he also featured prominently for uh, some local clubs led by FC Leopards and Madara United. If I don't mention FC Leopards, I know you beat me. <laughs> Immediately we leave this studio. And you know Ali Amur, a man who has been serving in FKF Transition Committee in charge of leagues and competition. Good to see you, gentlemen. Starting with you, Sepe. How are you doing? It's been a while. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm good. You're keeping well? Always. I can <laughs> see. Ah, <laughs> uh, Amur, the last time you were here, I think it was two weeks ago. Right now, your mandate as, you know, people in charge of running Kenyan football in interim capacity came to an end yesterday. Is, is there a vacuum? Uh, first, uh, thanks for having me again, two weeks. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a vacuum. There'll always be a plan. I mean, the government can never miss a plan in terms of... Uh, putting things together and fixing up uh, challenges. So I'm not sure if there's going to be a problem. I'm not sure there's going to be a problem. Yeah. Sepe, from the perspective of, you know, uh, a person who's sweated, you know, playing football to try and earn a living and put meal on the table. Right now, as we speak, uh, there is no much of activity. Uh, what do you make of, you know, the sport and what it means for a player? The lack of activity um, for the soccer players is discouraging uh, because, you know, this is your livelihood. And um, we, have, we have some people who are involved in football who, let's say, they call themselves club, club owners. So they will take advantage of this. Uh, and if you're a player, they'll tell you the league is not going on. We are not getting any sponsorship. So there's no way we'll pay you any money, okay? and you're going running for months and even if there's money it's coming from my pocket so appreciate whatever it is i'm giving to you okay so it's very discouraging and um if i'm a f if i put myself in their shoes I, i'm I, i'm always looking forward to when will the leagues and the competitions begin so that i can actually be able number one to put food on my table and be able to take care of my bills as an individual and as a family man but personally, you featured for some professional clubs overseas like Ismailia mm -hmm. of Egypt. Is that what happened abroad? Like, you know, when there is no activity, mm -hmm. uh, a team doesn't pay you because you're not <laughs> for offering something in return. No, 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 no. That we <laughs> That's a bad comparison because, you know, um, out, we have countries and, and, and continents that um, uh, we can say they are developed, they are more advanced in, in, in term, matters football and sports. And the respect they have for the sports and the sport, people involved in sports, uh, the ethics and everything. So if you have a contract, and we have a situation like this, people do honor their contracts. You know, if you get injured and it looks like it's a long-term injury and um, you're six months to the end of your contract, they pay you and say, okay, it was good doing business with you or we cannot have you anymore. So people honor those contracts in places where uh, the, the, the respect and the, the advancement in the game uh, is seen. But, you know, we're talking about real situation here, at home. here at home. Uh, people will take advantage of that. And we have seen clubs that are doing that to players. Ali Amur, talk to us about, you know, the accomplishments of the committee now that their mandate came to an end yesterday. What are the milestones? What can we talk about that has been achieved by, you know, General Morris Oyugi led committee? Yeah, Maxwell, as, uh, as I'll be echoing the accomplishments, eh, I'll also emphasize uh, for Kenyans to read the reports so they can actually understand because uh, maybe on this show I'll, I'll just highlight a few of them, but it's very important to get in details because it goes back, way, way back of this issue. And that's what Mulam has also mentioned is here the person who is really getting affected is the player. And that is a major stakeholder in football that uh, unfortunately in Kenya they have been ignored. So generation after generation. One of the accomplishments that I'll call out is we recommended a uh, player's contract to be respected and to be made transparent all the way from the, the, and the under 13 player that is good to under 15, under 17. Because we've seen in our school days, you're playing very good football, a club's come and recruit you, but you're not given a contract. And because you have passion, you feel happy you're playing for a bigger club. Okay. So there has to be a legal structure 
a sports legal structure by the Minister of Sports that is actually only focusing on players' contract. Because that is huge and the players are many. That is one of our recommendations. The second recommendation is, which is my passion, is about digitalization of the entire uh, football fraternity. And when I say digitalization, what do I mean? We want to know if by just a click of button come in, how many technical, I mean, how many team managers do we have in Kenya? What are their credentials? How many coaches do we have? How many referees do we have? How many players do we have and what is their age group? Why are we saying that? Because uh, you'll find players are impacted by the age. They feel, maybe I'm playing in Division 2, but I'll be recruited as a professional player. But nobody's telling them, at a certain age, you're absolute. Nobody wants you. So that dealer education about age group in, in uh, performing in league is very key. And because that structure is not there, that's why uh, Mulama is coming up with, with his academy. Because there's no any other platform whereby a scout will come in and looking for an under 13. That's why you see all these academies are coming in to address that issue. Okay. But if today there's a proper league structure with a segmented edge, his academy will be in that league. Mm -hmm. So you see that is business, that is commercialization, and that is also visibility for the player. Third thing that I recommended is the league structures. You can't have a league where you have 127 teams. <coughs> it just can't work. First, the player has to rest. The, the, I mean, even the referees officiating all those, uh, they, they, they have to be uh, uh, well trained. So it has to be a structured league. And for you to have all these teams, then it has to be distributed across the country. So by the time you're coming to the top player league, everybody has really actively co uh, uh, compete. That's very key because you, one league, and you find a same platform of league, let's say a division three, but they are 397. The other one are 11, the other one are 22. So they are not as per the FIFA regulation. We actually skip all the uh, FIFA regulations because FIFA comes and just looks at what happened in the Federation Administration, but they don't have supervision of what happened below. And probably and their that, priority, main that priority is the, is the national team. Yeah, not even the, the national team. The, uh, uh, the, uh, football. Pri priority of FIFA is admin. Though FIFA has a lot, if you go into FIFA uh, uh, a portfolio, in terms of training of team managers, training of how to manage league, it's a lot. The question is, as administrators, do we utilize that a lot, that timetable? For countries, which utilize that, they have started their own school. Today in Barcelona, you have your own crew. If you want to be a team manager, you log in, pay. You become a team manager and you're certified. That's like the CAFB. You can actually go in until the highest rank. So those structures need to be in place. That's one of the recommendations. The fourth recommendation that we actually put is women football. All KPL clubs must have a women football and a youth team. Now it's mandatory. So the question we ask, are our clubs ready with that? Because for you, if you're qualifying on, on club licensing, do you have a youth team? Do you have a women team? So our administrators in clubs, are they ready in that, to go in that? No, because teams now are actually coming with that. And you've mentioned about critical points, and I think one of them is about age grade football and you know centers of excellence and when you're talking about the two simon sepe malama is an expert of the same because i understand he works in partnership with overseas organizations that you know offer quality education to you know young ones who exhibit a passionate football talent and they're also you know academically oriented and talking about the same what has been the situation like because as we speak right now even you got academy yourself Mm -hmm. uh, are they working in conformity with, you know, what is supposed to be uh, in adherence to FIFA rules and standards? The, uh, let, let me call them clubs. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, youth clubs. Youth clubs. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, right now, you will find, um, like uh, my, my brother says, clubs and, and, and people in football at the grassroots level are trying to address that gap okay so you will find certain areas of the country i mean nairobi so i'll talk about nairobi yes. uh, will try and mobilize 
a certain number of teams, uh, maybe 20 in a certain area, and say, let's have um, a U13 league where we, can, we have 12 teams, okay, and spread that. Maybe we move to another region. Let's have a U, U9 league with 10 teams. Let's compete, okay. Are they in adherence to uh, regulations of the FIFA? Um, not certain. Um, are we trying to give an opportunity to kids to, to, to enjoy themselves, have fun, and try to develop their, their God-given God talents? Yes, we are, because some of us got the same opportunities uh, without saying, okay, FIFA, MSMA, we do this. So if, if we, we stay, we hold back and say, let us wait for somebody to tell us what FIFA want so that we can do the same, implement the same, will be, number one will be being un, very unfair to the kids, yes. number one, and will be denying them opportunities. Okay, so if the structure and the proposals and the policies are set right, at least they'll find you moving. You know, if we are, we are now asked that starting today, uh, today henceforth, uh, Nairobi, we've split Nairobi into 16 parts and we want guys from Pangani up to Dandora to participate in this U13 league, number one, we'll not have any trouble finding the teams. And number two, all the teams would love to do that. Okay, so for the youth teams, for, for, for the young boys and, and, and girls that are at the, at the bottom, I'm a grassroots level, uh, grassroots, people are trying to be as creative as they can. Uh, so that they can get the opportunity for the kids. And, and for the most part, it's, it's voluntary, yes. okay? And you can just see and feel the passion that is with the, the, the coaches and the guys who own the clubs and the kids. So it is, it is, it is tough because if you have, a, if you have a, let me say, an FA or a branch, Nairobi branch, that's uh, you represent football in Nairobi and you need to affiliate and all that, you expect, you don't expect necessarily money to be given to you but since you're giving an opportunity to kids you expect at least soccer balls okay <laughs> a set of cones <laughs> a tournament here and there uh, you know uh, kids am i even bibs okay so if you have to be doing this every day and, and stuff like football you, keep, you need to keep replenishing always you cannot start with 10 balls in january and and end up with the same 10 balls in December. Balloon. So every month you need to put in some more balls, a few more balls, a few more balls here and there. So it has been tough for, for, for the guys at the bottom, but um, we are resilient and we will keep going, uh, you know, just wishing that everything uh, turns out well for everyone. You mentioned about welfare of a player who is, you know, a paramount factor as far as growth and development of the game. And... Uh, how you know player contracts need to be honored by their employers and uh, as we speak right now we have a body called kefwa kenya footballers welfare association i think mulama i'm not certain about it i don't know whether he's part of the same because it consists of former internationals led by you know their president james Situma. as a fkf transition committee have you tried to collaborate with uh, former players and working in partnership with those existing entities that you know advocate for player welfare yeah i think there are three bodies eh? um, in, uh, the, you have uh, the kefa you have the legions you have another one car for something we've had, or CAF, we've had meetings with them and uh what personally i told them or other advisors say this is one of the strongest bodies you can ever have in a football fraternity it's been a football place in kenya why am i saying so because it consists of uh, present players and ex players. What they, what they need to do is, uh, uh, and this advice I gave them, they need to come together and put a structure. And because footballers, everybody had their own season and time, they need to have with, start with tier. Let's say from 1970 to 1980, tier one. Now that is a totally different group. Eh? It should be tier one. Then 1980 to 1990, tier two up to where we are right now. So at that, if you look at those tiers, you'll have legions old players, then you so have present have, players. So you'll have a tier consisting of the likes of yeah. Bobby Ogola, yeah. JJ Exactly. Masika. And the reason I'm saying that, so that anybody who is now in the 2022, 2021, eh, who might not remember a legend, you see, he's not getting mixed 
with that discussion because that discussion is totally different. Yeah, true. Then they have two bodies. The players who are active and the players who are non-active. And I told them they are bigger than TSE. Bigger than a teacher's union. So if they come together, you see, and they'll have representative in all the counties because other players have gone back home. All the counties. So you have through a county, uh, uh, whatever the stream is, and say uh, the football association or the, 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 the football union for, for another county. If you want to see so-and-so here. Now under them, they'll have the legal department. You see, under them, we even started a, pro, a, a program whereby for the former footballers, we are saying, can they be match homes? Mm -hmm. Then the training programs and everything. So if a footballer has a problem with the administrator, this body is so strong that you cannot play around with it. It's happening in all other countries. But unless they come together, and then now they insist that insurance, because insurance is not only for the, the active player, also for the non-active player. All the time, and Mulama will tell you, most of the players who are now have gone back home sometimes cannot even afford 100 or 200 shillings for medical cover. NHI 500 a month, they cannot, and what the, the labor they given to clubs, you can't imagine. So they need to come together and form a strong group. And all of them have a goodwill. All of them, the leaders have goodwill. Just come together and just put those tears. So they need to embrace solidarity and Yeah, solidarity. And they say, these are serious. Yes. Just amortize everything. Because uh, somebody's played in the 80s, eh? Eh? You cannot mix him with somebody who's playing with the 20s. They'll have issues. And all of them have played in national teams. Mm -hmm. The only thing they understand is the rule of football and everything. But administration is something totally different from actually the active uh, uh, playing in the field. So we have actually advised them. It's also in the recommendations. Mm -hmm. And talking about the insurance scheme, I think mm -hmm. all of us uh, watched some story regarding one of the local players, Ezekiel Otoma, who featured for yeah. Ulinzi Stars at some point. He's paralyzed and I think his football uh, future has been brought to an end. I'm not sure, but obviously we wish him well whether he will play again because of the situation that he is facing. And if there was such a medical scheme in place, maybe we could have, you know, had some hope in him getting revived. Simon Sepe Malama, talking from that perspective of, you know, what players go through, mm -hmm. besides insurance scheme for, you know, the current uh, crop of players who are actively involved in the game, which other, you know, mechanisms should be put in place by the current FA or the incoming uh, regime to help, you know, address the plight of footballers? You know, if, if, we, if we leave the challenge we are talking about, if we leave it for the FA I'm to the FA alone, um, we will be very, being very unfair. Oh, okay, this is this is a societal issue. Okay, so number one, the entire society. Number two, the government. Then we have the FA, and we have the clubs. Okay, mm -hmm. so the clubs who are the employers I'll, now. Yes, I'll give you an example. I was playing for uh, for Matari United, and I got injured, and insurance was not there, so I had to take care of myself. If the society shows the same passion that they show when, number one, commenting and giving uh, 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 the, their views about the game, maybe Harambe Stars plays Togo, uh, you know, everyone will be talking about the game and everyone is a coach and all that, okay? If society gave the same passion in funding, I'm contributing towards supporting clubs, the government the same. So county government in Nairobi does the same to clubs. County government in Western does the same. You'll find the players getting good payment. Okay? Yes. Because the funding in football, per se football is not in this country is not good enough. So even when with uh, even with the um, insurance you're talking about, yes. personally come I didn't have enough funds yes. without an insurance, then maybe I could be limping right now, I'm gonna give crutches. Okay, so what I'm saying is, it's not just the FA, but the entire so Sisi Kama, a country. We need to, number one, really love the game, love it uh, uh, passionately enough such that Tunasema, this is 
my club I'll go to the stadium and pay I'll pay membership I will I'm, I'm a corporate in Kenya Pengine for example mimi ni equity bank I will support with this much okay but the money is not enough even the, however whatever the FA does uh, and the money is not there in the pockets as a players um, as a clubs there's little that can happen yes okay so I think we need to put in a little bit more money to the players payment your players who can a cap at least minimum wage for the players you know in 2022 we have players who are getting paid 22,000 and they're the top league 30,000 today your top league player you're supposed you're even expected to play in the national team and go play pro okay how will you make it in pro pro football nutrition diet <laughs> you cannot even eat the kind of meals that are expected to be uh, you know consumed by the players you cannot take care of yourself pengine in recovery the same way mchezaji anapaka until he gets there okay so minimum wage at least mchezaji wa Kenya if he gets 150000 lowest paid what's the problem with that so so kama society if we can show the same love translate that kipesa so that there's money in the pockets of the players pockets of the clubs then even story insurance like he says a player cannot afford to pay for himself 200 yeah. bob mwisho wa mwezi then we can now be, now we can be able to do that and we can be able to be talking about sasa progressing kama country in football aliamuri it boils down to who regarding sepes comment over you know yeah. self sustainability of players so that we provide quality remuneration to them so that will enable them to take good care of themselves I including think insurance scheme we come back again to commercialization of clubs unless we commercialize fully our clubs then we're going to achieve all those points that uh, uh, Mulama has mentioned one if you're running a club you as an official of a club what is your aim what's your target you want to be an official just by name or official for selfish gains or an official that this club has to be taken from this level up to this level then the chairmen of the club, do they give targets to the people who are actually the administrators? Do they have marketing teams that all the time they are rushing with business plans to corporates? We have a huge following. And the, uh, the fans are passionate. But even the fans are getting tired because their passionate is being discouraged all the time. Mm -hmm. Not because of the players, it's because of the way the clubs are run. So we have to go fully into commercializations. And what is commercialization in, in football clubs? It's high time now clubs have a proper organogram. Where you have a chairman, you have a board. And who is sitting on that board? Well, at your free time, go and Google who sits on Bayern Munich's board. You find the director of Adidas. He said there, uh, at, uh, German Telco, seated there. These are people who... When you see them, or when you know that they're seated there, you as a fan, you're confident that the money that you're paying to the club first is secured. What sorts of revenue do we need to drive to sustain clubs? Have we constructed our merchandise in a way that this season, eh, this is what we are unveiling to our clubs? Then how do you protect the player? Because protecting the player is not only on the contract. That contract has a lot of caps on it. If he's going to be uh, putting a jersey and, and maybe an Adidas shoe. And Adidas saying, me and Mulama, we are signing a different contract. So Mulama is a brand ambassador today in the country, like many others. But do those officials still recognize him as a brand ambassador? Because they don't, maybe indirectly, there are so many kids out of Madare, by seeing him, they got motivated. You see, now that is an, an indirect or direct income for the club that is gaining without him being active. But if you go to other, uh, I mean, other countries, eh, the players are still active out of the field. Because one kid grew up and said, hey, Mulama is very disciplined. I like to be like him. So his brand is still being utilized. Mm -hmm. Then in the contract, after a certain age, how is he covered medically? Am I going to pay for, for the next five years? Uh, 500 for him in terms of NHIF. So that contract of the player has to be really protected. Then it comes to remuneration. Now that is 
I think an elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Players yeah. are getting paid handouts. Peanuts, yeah. my friend. Peanuts. And, and you know, I, I was also almost interjecting when he was talking about the the uh, the, the yards that, that they've taken uh, during this transition period. Yes. You know, and and you know some of those points. And one of those points that I picked, the bar is set too high. You yes. know, when you're talking about club licensing, and you say it is it's going to be mandatory if you have a club in the Premier League, you have a women's team, and you have a youth, a youth team. team. Yeah. And this is a club that can barely get a sponsorship, a sponsorship <laughs> worth 10 million. You know, we, we've been hearing <laughs> the other day, existing somebody say says uh, one of the big clubs gets 55 million per season. You know, that's not even enough. But, okay, now how many clubs out of the 18 are getting anywhere close to that or even half of that? Okay, and then we have, you need to have a women's team participate mm -hmm. in a league yes. and you need to have a youth team. That, you know, having a youth team doesn't just mean you have kids we, running yes. around, but a lot of stuff is going on and yes, even yes. taking care of their school to some extent. Exactly. You know, in yeah. places that really embrace and understand football and the importance of grooming these young kids, you take care of their food. That is, that is how you come up with uh, the cost of this player, so to speak. Okay? So, he's 17 years old and he's going to Manchester United. And you say he is worth fifty million. How do you, how did you reach to the uh, how did you reach at this figure? These are the things that you want to be doing with the youth teams. Are our clubs really, like he says, are the owners of the the holders of these offices in these clubs? Are they the right people? Are they even do they even understand the kind of situation they put themselves in by saying I own this club and I'm running a club and this is where we want to get to? Because honestly. What is happening right now with the clubs? The club owner is the marketing manager. <laughs> some, you wear many hats. Some, you know, some are the coaches still. <laughs> some are doing the finances. So, Akisema okay. even And that okay. brings us to the question of, you know, who is supposed to be in charge of a club? What are the eligibility requirements for someone, you know, who deserves being at the helm of a top-tier club that... Uh, he will or she will oversee the successful running of the team because like we were talking before the show started about you know florentino perez of real madrid he's been a mainstay uh, regarding his tenure as a president of the team because i think of his financial might when the team gets stranded he got what it takes to you know come to the rescue of the team should you also follow suit and replicate the same at home younger azam simba i think are doing the yeah. same too over and above that, and uh, I, I said it on, during the caretaker committee tenure, can we take our club, KPL chairmen, both men and women, at least to Tanzania, just to learn how clubs are being run? An induction trip, let me call it an induction trip, just to learn how clubs are being run. They get a blueprint, and just when they come back, let them replicate only 40% of it, not much. Because younger, Simba, uh, and Ntibwa uh, uh, and uh, coastal, uh, coastal, coastal stars, Union. yeah, coastal unions at Tanga. All of them uh, started like where we are. Our clubs were far much better ahead by then. But now they have overtake, overtaken yeah, us. Yeah, because they disrupted everything, sat down, looked back, and were active listeners. Unfortunately, some of us are not active listeners. If he's giving feedback, say, ah, we are Chana Nile, Cheza Bolu, we are Chana Meisha. So, yeah, so when you're given a point to become an active listener, then you action it. If a, a sponsor comes in, it's not about just giving money to the club. The sponsor should ask the value. Value. You see, the value. And one of the value is, how are you playing your players? How are you paying them? Can I, can, can I see an ERP system whereby I know your, pay, your players are being paid a minimum amount? So I know the money that I'm giving you goes into this. Okay. Do we have... Uh, uh, agreements, maybe with hotels, where your season is starting, you as a club, you know that you're going to go to Mombasa or Kakamega or Kericho, do you have a hotel that you in advance engage them and say, I'm going to come to your hotel, can you give me this discount? So your financial person has a proper budget. Air ticketing system. Air tickets and everything. Once you have that in advance, and that's what a good organi organized club does. There are some clubs who do that here. Then, you know, these are my players then which insurance company? Because today, insurance companies are yearning to cover players. But what is the package? So your sponsor man comes 
automatically goes to insurance, you're covered. It goes to salary, you're covered. It goes to transport, you're covered. Then now you look for other sources of revenues, extra revenues, which clubs are minting millions globally in terms of those meetings. So we need uh, uh, the KPL club's owners, at least, or chairmen, to have an induction trip to go and see what are the best practices. What are we missing? To go do benchmarking. Just <laughs> benchmarking. My friend, we, you know, we, we, we had senior government officials do that when we had the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other I day. think it was in Russia. Benchmarking. 2016. Now yes. we, are, we are 2022. Six years later, you tell me what anybody, any one of them, learned and what we're trying to implement. Okay? We've talked about stadiums having, you know, you go benchmark and see why these countries are so developed in football and why they are where they are, or how is it that they produce a certain number of professional players, uh, you know, and world beaters. And we come and say we want to build one stadium in every county. And we feel that's developing the game. Let us talk about Nairobi because yes, this is sort yes, of, we, yes, we yes, understand yes, Nairobi. Nation, Nairobi. If we have a stadium in Kangemi and you live in Dandora or Kayole, how many times are you going to access that stadium as a kid? You need training, a certain number of hours a week. You need to participate in matches. Toka Dandora every day, at least one hour training in Kangemi. How feasible is that? Doesn't even make sense. We have countries and we have reports. UEFA made a report after the same World Cup, 2018, I believe, and say they build mini pitches. So that when this kid is at home, Akiangalia in Jadrisha, there is a field there, not necessarily make up carpet, but it has been leveled. And the guys around that area that love the game and have invested in the game in terms of training and coaching, they have been actually educated and trained so well. The least, uh, um, the least certificate was a UEFA B in the project that I'm talking to you about, the uh, hat trick project. UEFA B license, that's the least. Everyone else is above that. So this kid goes out. There's a level playing field, Kiwanja, Safi, 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 and we have well-trained coaches just from around there, okay? Since the benchmarking in Russia, how many, key, how many cases, how many coaches can we say, the government say, uh, felt that every year they will be sponsoring or backing this number of coaches yes. every year, uh, so that we can be where the rest of, where those people that we watched at the World Cup are. You understand? So it's a big challenge. If we had senior government officials go and this is where we are, I don't know about the FK. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know about the KPL how, club how, owners, but how, how it, it is a great idea. It is a such great a idea. program back home. Now that you widely traveled and uh, with your vast experience, how can it get executed? Because like what yeah. Sepe is saying, you know, if government, senior government officials, including ministers, and the politicians led by MPs and senators traveled to Russia in 2018 for benchmarking and nothing has been uh, as materialized in terms of implementing what they saw. You see, I think... How uh, possible is it to it execute? Is, it, it is very much possible. There's goodwill. Eh? Right now, when you talk to clubs, chairmen and CEOs, there's very much goodwill. What they need to... is uh, uh, We've also suggested it. Maybe they go in for a three-day seminar in the country and you have professionals coming in to uh, train them. You remember, I mean, in Ekiateka, we actually uh, have, 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 we have a report, I think, from uh, PwC or one of these, or Dileot or something, that these guys who are actually managing uh, football league, uh, Premier Football League, the Spasina Liga, we have that report from them. So one of the uh, so, uh, uh, advice is we bring in the CEOs and the chairmen of clubs for a three-day seminar to take them through. Why do you need a limited company? Why is it important to have a player's contract? And on that seminar, we also invite in sponsors. And the sponsor will come and say, this is what we require from you clubs. Because a sponsor, once they come, once come, who comes in to sponsor, they want their, their brand to be protected. And they want value for their value. money. So uh, I'm seeing, even before they start this coming league, it's important to have a two days or three days seminar. And to take these clubs through a vigorous seminar to understand, to give me understand, this is your vision, this is your roadmap. Now then you have a timetable. When are you going to have a women uh, a team? When are you going to have a youth team? Then with that, that is a report now to FIFA. I say clubs have agreed to have a women team on this date, a youth team on this date. 
Or you can adapt a youth team and say, I have a youth team, I've adapted it, or a women team, I've adapted it. So these are our youth team. So the sponsor comes in knowing that I'm sponsoring, sponsoring three teams. There's a, a, a women, a, 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 the KPL, the women, and a youth. Then this sponsor will understand, wow, so we have youth teams across the country. So my brand will be known eh, from this age group. There's value, and the sponsors are willing. They're only scared because anytime they come in, there's chaos. If that chaos is packed, these KPL clubs will grow. Because we have talent, we have passion, we have visionary leaders. The cha some of the chairmen are really visionary and really want to grow. So it's important to take them too. Then, now call even legions. Call Mulama and say, what is your experience in running an academy? What is your experience as a player? Today, we are, t we are calling all the legions say, he can be a brand ambassador. Go back to Fafa Jericho or go back to Queens or to Kisi and say, guys, for me to be here, I was not smoking, I was not doing this. Then they become legions, bec are brand ambassadors of countries. Today, Oliver Kahn had to be taken back to school huh? after playing all international matches and winning World Cup so that he, became, he can become a manager. Those are job opportunities. There are so many. And I'll keep on insisting, football in itself does not need funds from outside. If we are all structured properly with transparency, then we can actually sustain ourselves in football. Well, wow, quality conversation. It's been with these two gentlemen who form an integral part as far as Kenyan football is concerned. Before I let them go, I think I would want your final submission. Sepe, uh, <laughs> what's your parting shot regarding way forward uh, for Kenyan football? <laughs> Yesterday I was talking to Bobby Ogola, former Kenyan yes. international, and asking him about his, you know, uh, uh, insights regarding upcoming FIFA World Cup in Qatar and African chances. And he was telling me, before we talk about other five African countries representing us, we need to talk and ask ourselves, why is Kenya not there? <laughs> and even before we start talking about you know, Kenya, we need to start us talking about Kenya should start qualifying for regional competitions like Sekafa, uh -huh. AFCON, then World Cup. So it's a gradual process. What's your parting shot? Is it really a parting shot? But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to get, to get our football to where we need, we all would love to see it, um, uh, we need a concerted effort from everyone, from government, private sector, the citizen, and everybody involved um, in the game. Let us be honest to the game and try to get it to where it needs to be. I'll give you an example. Benin, right now, the government and FIFA uh, and the FA, they work together on football education and development for the betterment of football in Benin. Okay, so if we can pull everyone honestly together as society, I think it's an effort that, like he says, we wouldn't need anyone, uh, any, any funding or any support from whatever, whatever other source. We as a country, 46 million plus people, can come together and decide the future of this country. Wow. Ali Amur, what do you want to say regarding way forward on Kenyan three, football? Actually, three things. Huh? First and foremost is uh, the education of the FIFA calendar. Today, we have to look at the FIFA calendar. We are banned, we are suspended. When the, the suspension is lifted tomorrow, which is the immediate competition that our clubs or international matches we are going to honor. If you look at the African Cup, I think it's been postponed to 2024. Clubs towards mid or end of 2023. And even Sekafa, it will be next year. So we have a window of six months if our ban is lifted today, we have a window of six months for us to go actively back to FIFA tournaments. And that is one thing, I mean, even clubs don't understand it. We need to understand the FIFA calendar, which is supposed to, in, in, in Senegal, it's shared to everybody. They know this is the FIFA calendar. You see, in other countries, even in Tanzania, they know the FIFA calendar because of, uh, of the activities. So in Kenya, I don't think most clubs or even officials understand what is the FIFA calendar. If our ban is lifted today, which is the immediate competition that our teams are going to get engaged. So we have time to fix our house together. That is one. Second, I mean, in the previous show, you talk about doping, ADAC. We talk about doping at competition level. I think doping education should be introduced in schools. And age cheating too. Yes, should be introduced in schools, whereby the kids who are growing up and they want to be athletes, you'll understand 
for me to be a successful athlete, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be taking this kind of uh, uh, drugs or ETC. See? The third one is about World Cup. We need to emphasize World Cup, many African countries are not participating in World Cup. But if you look at the emphasis, okay, imagine putting KBC, I, I'm sure you are you're, 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 host broadcaster, you're, you're host yes. broadcaster. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It should be emphasized. There should be kind of uh, education to the academies. And say, today, his academy is going in to watch a World Cup match, sponsored only by water and ah. everything. You see? Then now, and you replicate it in different country, uh, counties. Then you'll find that there's mileage. Now people understand, oh, I want to be a player. Because some of us were young. We saw the Kinapeles and the Kinaplatini, and it motivated us. No, I want to be, and it gave birth to so many professional footballers. Kenya as a country went late a bit in professionalism, but we had a very great team. He was in Ismaili, I can tell you this passion in Egypt, with the Egyptians. The town that you come from, that is your, that is your. That is your club. And that's what's happening in, 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 in UK and any other countries. That is your town. You'll not go to any other club. So we need to create that passion. The town that you come from and everything. My last point is about stadiums. We are struggling with venues. Today we have 12 KPL clubs, only in Nairobi. Imagine if six of them are playing on that weekend. It will be chaos. That's why we brought our football block at 1 o'clock. Me, I'm totally Double against it. Double headers. Double headers. I'm totally like, because... 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Bulama was talking about the diet. Do you know at what time as a player you're supposed to eat, your, to eat take your food and go to the field? You take a player at 1 o'clock. Meaning you've eaten at around 11? No. Four hours before. Four hours before. Four hours before and a certain dad. Yes, we cannot be that dad, but at least for a KPL club to play at one o'clock, I don't think it's right. My opinion. So in the to stadiums, we need to have proper stadiums. And the stadiums will start. Who are the owners of the sad KPL clubs? The clubs. They have to start now owning their own stadiums. Wow. Ali Amur, in charge of leagues and competition in the just ending FKF Transition Committee. Simon Saipe Mulama, former Kenyan international, having featured for, you know, Madara United and FC Leopards. Too unfortunate, Madara United has been relegated. Okay. Most of us rallied behind them, but, you know, there's no other option. And coincidentally, both of them schooled in Ethereum. The same region. High same, region. Nyanza. same region, Nyanza. Nyanza. Yes. Michael Coates was your classmate. No, he's my schoolmate. Schoolmate? Yes. Sepe was your schoolmate? <laughs> a person of your generation? Of our generation, well, well we had a huge uh, and a great school. Sande Odiambo was there. Mm -hmm. Abdul Abdallah, daddy, was there. Yeah. Uh, you know, some, some just um, John Momo Irori. John Momo Irori. Ramadan yeah. Balala, Geoffrey Okoth, Jambe, we had. Wow, countless names. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's been a pleasure joining me. Thank you guys for coming through and sharing that insightful information regarding Kenyan football, the state of <coughs> our soccer, and going forward, what we should do to ensure that, you know, we revive the dwindling standards of the game and the lost glory as well. Thank you for coming through. This is the touchline. My name is Max Wasike. Don't go away. Continue staying tuned. The show proceeds. Thank you.